Round your city, round the clock. Everybody needs you. No, you can't make everybody equal. Although you got Buku family, you don't even got nobody being honest with you. Breathe till I evaporated. My whole body see through transportation handmade. And I know it better than most people. I don't trust them anyways. You can't break the law with them. Get some good she have a calm night. Shooters killing left and right. Working through your worst night. If I get my money right, you know I won't need you. Then I tell you. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the History Boys Abroad podcast. Uh, my name is Graham and I'm here as always with my co host, Tony. Hell, hell. Yeah, indeed. Uh, do you think we should get like a kind of sign on like we do every week? Because I'm just making the, the words that come out, I don't even think about beforehand. So we could maybe yeah. have like an R8 trips. You think R8 trips? Is that something we could use? We can try that. Yeah, we can try that if you want, mate. Uh, no, nah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so this week we're going to talk about. Well, first of all, sorry for being away for a while. Uh, you were in the, the Spanish mountains or something? Well, Catalonian mountains, Cat- yeah, depending on who you ask. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was up in the mountains. It was a, a, a job I was doing for a few weeks, literally rural Catalonia, right up in the mountains for a few weeks. So I was like, completely cut off from everything. I did have internet to an extent, but only in specific places. So I did manage to catch some games, mm-hmm. um, some streamy buzz. But um, <laughs> nice. aye, it's been a bit of a mad summer, but uh, this is me back to normal now. Cool. So cool. Yeah. Cool. And, and yourself? Yeah, well, just basically when you get back, I went up to the, the Highlands for, for a week. Yeah. So. Didn't have much into that, like, uh, I think it was like 1 MB, so I basically, I couldn't even send videos over WhatsApp, that's how slow yeah. the internet was, so uh, yeah. it was hard, but got to this uh, little hotel to watch the Apoel Beersheba second leg, and yeah. it was full of uh, the types you would imagine in the Highlands, not of the Catholic persuasion, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was fun. But I, uh, we're com- we're back and we're going to be talking this week about Sean Maloney. We actually threatened this a few weeks ago, but just because of the way things worked out, we couldn't actually get the episode done. But we've got the feedback from when we asked a few weeks ago, so we're going to include that and in with the feedback from this time as well. So yeah. why, Tony, this was uh, your suggestion. Why Sean Maloney? In my opinion, from the, the feedback I've had from my pals and you know, the Twitter and that, he divides the Celtic support to this day. Um, some say that he was better than McGady. Some say he was absolutely fucking shite. And there's an argument to be made for him being the best prospect that Celtic have had since I don't know, going way way back. I don't know. I don't know. Like for for being the best prospect in the past fifteen years, for example. Aye. Um. Obviously, Kieran Tierney looks to be amazing, but the impact that Maloney had, um, is something that I thought was worth talking about. Um, and he played for about 10 years overall for Celtic, which is a long time. And he's a bit of a strange character. I've always thought he was very, very quiet, kept himself to himself. Aye. He was never in any bother, and he was hot and cold. So he scored some big goals, but and he was a bit of a mental midget, and I just thought that would be interesting to, to talk about. As I say, some of the feedback I've had from my pals and uh, the Twitter and bits and bobs, like, it's like contrasting opinions. Almost every every person has a different opinion on him. So I thought it was a good idea. One thing that I, I don't know, like I don't know if you you kind of came across this, but this idea that no, it's not an idea; it's a fact. He was born in Malaysia. He lived in Aberdeen. Do you think there was something kind of holding him back among Celtic fans from not being like a kind of uh, Glasgow Celtic boy? You mean like Celtic minded? Aye. Do you, do you mm. think that ever held him back? I mean, nah, probably not. No. To be honest, to be honest I mean, it's it is quite a well known fact that he was born in Malaysia and he was from Aberdeen, but. I don't know. I don't think I don't think that was ever anything. I've never seen anyone talk about that other than to point out that as a fact. No. I don't seem to think that it was a it was something that held him back. Cause like as we're saying, like he really did divide the support. Like some people just thought he was absolutely shite and he didn't do anything. Like one of my mates just texted me saying, "Done nothing, absolutely nothing for Celtic." <laughs> like, well, I've been reading. I've been reading back, and obviously <laughs> one player of the year and uh, young player of the year in the same season and had multiple assists and goals, but. Um, yeah, so he made his debut with Celtic anyway, the first debut. He was with Celtic since 1999 as a trainee, mm-hmm. and he made his debut in 2001 against the Deedcunts. 
and it was a very specific game actually he actually replaced Tommy Johnson do you remember him? I was actually at that game uh, the 3-0 three, three at Ibrox it was Aye. it was what fun- was this- the, the specific thing about that game what was the what was the most important thing about that game the most you? important thing about that game I can't remember was that was Larson's that, 50th Larson getting his 50th wasn't it aye. Aye. the one thing that I think many people just didn't know who was coming on because I don't think we, there'd been much talk about him before the game yeah so like I think I was standing with my brother and we were like who, who the fuck's Sean Maloney you know what I mean and he's, just, a t- he's a tiny wee guy he's always been very very small and like for a wee boy to come on in a game like that in that season as well, that was a very, very, very big season in our history. I think it was disconcerting the way that he ran and he had such wee legs. You know, like that yeah. always freaked me out about him. Like it was just like he was running; and his legs were going so fast. Yeah, I mean, he 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 had a lot of talent. He Aye. still does. He's still playing at the highest, arguably depending on who you speak to, the highest level of football on the planet. The, mo- still, the most expensive level, anyway. <laughs> the most expensive level, I. But when he when he came into the Celtic side, he was in. A team with Larson and Mialbi and McNamara and Lambert and uh, Sutton and Petrov and players like that. So for him, like they're all big guys, you know. They're all like relatively big. Mialbi, Lambert, Sutton, Stubbs, they're all massive guys. And this little Sean Maloney character rocks up. But the team also had players like Stephen Craney, Jamie Smith, Simon Lynch, Barry John Cord, Dimitri Karin, Paul Shields, etc. Mm-hmm. So it was a bit of a mad time. Um, and this was Mark Neal's first season, is that right? So that would be, yep, yeah, because that would be the season after the... Larson broke his leg. Yeah, so this is the season when things were starting to really change in Scottish football. But he made his full debut um, in a 1 0 loss to Kilmarnock away. And when he did start, I'm pretty sure when he started that game, he was in a midfield with uh, Healy, Fotheringham, and Jamie Smith, and Tebley and Vega were playing as well, Ram and Vega. Um, and it was before the Scottish Cup final in the treble when he was used quite sparingly. Uh, in this, the big, the first couple of seasons of his career with Celtic, he was used very sparingly. For example, he would play at the odd league game and come off the bench, but when it came to Europe, he was not even on the bench for a lot of games. Was there not a game round about that time where we beat somebody about seven or eight now at home? It was a cup game, maybe at Alloa or Albion Rovers or something like that. It was Stirling Albion. Stirling Albion and Tebley scored like a twenty-five yarder. <laughs> That's right, and he <laughs> fucking. Maloney scored four goals. Ah, that's right. That and you, and you that, was in, in that. that was in the, um, I think that was the 2001, 2002 season. Okay, maybe. okay. So. I think I've got, uh, I'll, I'll get to that. But <laughs> he was, um, this was when we won the league. We won the league in April 7th against St. Mirren. So we're like romping, romping the league. And we finished with 97 points. And the Huns had 82 points. And his first introduction now obviously he came in and made his debut towards the end of the season I think Celtic had actually Celtic had actually won the league when we went to Ibrox and beat them which makes it even sweeter <laughs> you know we won the league on the 7th of April and then we went to I think the game against the Huns was like the end of April so we go to Ibrox and, and we do them nice. and so he's obviously coming in at a really really important time for Celtic <laughs> but he was on the subs bench quite a lot for Celtic I, I look through it's difficult to go through every single game it's not there's no real um, obviously the Celtic wiki again has just been the bible for this but it's in, it's, there's no way you can actually find every single game he plays you just need to click in and check and click in and check uh, but this is uh, the, the next seasons when we played Ajax uh, and the two legs against Ajax and you know we went over to Ajax and pumped him but he wasn't anywhere near the squad he wasn't even on the bench and then when we came back uh, to Celtic Park he wasn't on the bench either the thing, but, that, the thing that I always said about Martin O'Neill was that he didn't like rotating his team yeah. So he had the tried and tested, and he didn't. I mean, Alan Thompson started in the left every game. I mean, he wouldn't bring somebody in, you know what I mean? So it was. He only seemed to give players a shot from the bench or when it came to yeah. these cup games. Where, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was a sub in the next league game after the Ajax one. He replaced Bobby Petter. Um, well, it said that he replaced Petter, but also at the same time, Guppy, excuse me, replaced Larson. So uh-huh. that tells me that he was replacing, he was technically replacing Larson, and Guppy was. An out and out left wing, and obviously Peter was that as well. So and no one, I think Maloney was no one Maloney was being replace. used as a. Sorry, mate, on you go. I was just going to make a stupid joke because I thought you'd finish your point, but uh, you should go on with your serious point. <laughs> <laughs> right, just shut up, right? <laughs> so I was just going to say that um, he was he was used as a striker initially, and then when he was pushed wide later in his career, which we'll get to, when uh, I think when Strachan came in, he moved him to wide left, like a left mid but he was initially played as a striker mm-hmm. 
And obviously, did you think of the size of him? He must be smaller than Scott McDonald. Scott McDonald was pretty small for a striker. But anyway, he um, he got his first goal um, against Dundee away to make it 4 0. He came off the bench 88 minutes and scored his first goal. And uh, you can see the goal on YouTube. Lambert just 4 0 away from home. Like, it's an amazing result, anywhere. And Dundee and Lambert just marches up the pitch. It's through ball. Maloney just beats the offside trap and slots at home. He's, he's super duper young. Uh, At this point, he must only be like, I don't know, 18 or 19. Easily. Wikipedia have got his height as 5 foot 7. He's no, absolutely no chance. Uh, he looks smaller like, than that, man. 4 foot 14 or something like that. <laughs> nah, he's not. There's no way that he's. You see, oh, I've never actually met him. I think I've seen him in town and stuff like that, but. Um, he was, he's famous for being small, and that's something that Martin O'Neill said when he eventually had the, the the first the first, when he left Celtic for the first time. Martin O'Neill was like, "What? You know, he's he's not exactly the biggest guy, but what he doesn't have in height, he makes up for with like his, his ability, his absolute quality." Martin O'Neill seemed to really really like him. Aye. So the two thousand one two thousand two season, um, we played. That was the Juventus game. We had the. Um, we played the Juventus game with the, the, the really famous Martin post match interview. I like I put that on the Twitter earlier on, and like watching that it just gets your back up even more. Martin Neal was fucking incredible in that post match interview. Um, but again, like he wasn't really getting games in Europe at all. We that was the season we had Porto, um, Ajax. Sorry, we beat Ajax, and then we were Porto, Rosenborg, and, uh, and Juventus. Juventus, and we actually done quite well in that group. We actually we beat Juventus four three at home. I'm sure we beat Porto. At home, maybe, and we beat. I think we beat Rosenberg home and Rosenberg brought back. I think brought back scored twice th- against this. Correct- that was when brought back. Yeah, the kind of uh, listeners can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're the only team or the first team to have collected nine points in a Champions League group and not go and never go out. Something tells me that maybe Newcastle done it. Right, there was something with Newcastle where they done it. I don't know whether it's they qualified with the least amount of points or they qualified. They didn't qualify. I think that was a hundred like, qualified with the least amount of points. Aye, aye, I know, I know, I know. I was thinking that there, but I, he, he did make like one fleeting appearance in the um, one of the portal games. I think like Sean Money, but it was just mainly used as a sub. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously we spoke about the Still and Albion game. He scored two goals in each half. Um, and the thing that stood out about that game was not just the fact that he scored. Four goals. The point I'm going to make is not even about Trump alone. It was about Morton Vigost. Right. That was his comeback after uh, he had the um, the uh, Guillaume Baron the the syndrome that he had when right. he had like a, a life threatening uh, illness, and that was his first game back uh, with Celtic, and he came through it. And after that, Celtic get papped out in um, the Champions League, and then we played Valencia, which I would love to get a team like that. You know, these days it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be exotic and exciting. Obviously, the Valencia game went to penalties and we got beat, but Celtic put in a good performance. Um, Maloney then went on. Obviously, this is the season where we're winning quite a lot of things, and Celtic were resting players in certain games because we were playing the we're playing Hearts away. Hearts away traditionally, historically, is a difficult tie. Mm-hmm. But O'Neill thought that he would start with Sean Maloney and Simon Lynch Oof. up front, and both scored. In the game, both score. I'm pretty sure they scored two apiece. Maloney definitely scored two, and Lynch scored at least one. And this was like a week before the Scottish Cup final uh, against the Huns, and there were ten changes made from the previous game. So like, we, we put out a shadow side just because we we're playing so many games. Have you ever seen Simon Lynch's music video? No, I didn't even know he had one. Ah, uh, he's got a music video where he's like uh, busking in Glasgow. It's class, man. You need to look it up. <laughs> I had I had a quick look, you know, you end up doing these mad wiki softs and you, you end up clicking through and he's he's actually Canadian. I don't think he's playing anymore. I don't think he I don't think he'd done anything actually. He's one of these guys that was probably doing very, 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 very well, very lucky to be even in the squad of Celtic and then he's just had nothing. Absolutely uh, nothing ever since. That Dominic Server. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and he's not even you know, he's he's he retired like ridiculous. <laughs> he's now in something completely different. But we won the league um, the 7th of April. It was almost a year to the day from the previous year where we won the league against Livingston at home. And Maloney wasn't in the squad. Now, there's a lot of chat about Maloney's injuries. It's difficult to, to find when he got injured, but all I know is that he was injured a lot throughout his time at Celtic, and that's something that's going to come up quite a lot 
as we're discussing this. But in this season, this was 2002, 2001, 2002, 20 appearances and 10 goals. It's not a bad return. It's not, I, I mean, it started off well. The first series injury that I could see was in 2004. So that was the three, two, the 2003-2004 season where he got a cruciate ligament injury. Well, that's it. And this, this is the one that people like to bring up and, and sort of beat him with it because he was doing relatively well at Celtic. He's a prospect that came from the youth setup, and he's doing quite well at Celtic when he's going along. And then he gets injured in a, in a reserve game. Now, I don't know why he was playing in a reserve game to begin with because Celtic were playing. It was part of Thistle reserve game in 2004. We're jumping ahead here, but that's fine. 2004. Mm-hmm. By this point, he'd made 77 appearances for Celtic and scored 21 goals. And then Celtic were playing Partick Thistle in another 21 game. Do you remember? I think, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Celtic, in, 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 in the, the, when the Reserve League existed, if not the Colts thing, when the Reserve League existed, if Celtic played Dundee, the big team played Dundee at the weekend, the Reserves would play the Dundee Reserves. That used to happen. It was in tandem, was it not? I think that's right. I, I think so. Right, OK. Let's pretend it was. Anyway, we're playing Partick Thistle um, in the league. And then, so we were playing under-21s as well. And he was an under-21 squad and he got a cruciate injury. And that was him for about a year. I think that the problem that, that fans have is that they, they look at players like Malone and they look at players like Lustig and they blame them personally for injuries. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I feel it sometimes as well. You're like, fucking come on, like Bo Richter, for example. But I mean, there's, there's some players that are at it. There's some players that just don't have the heart. And there's some players that just get fucking really bad injuries and there's nothing you can do about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. For, for Maloney, I, I'm not sure which way it was. So yeah. we'll get we'll get onto that later. But so you, yeah. we skipped ahead. So is there something anything you wanted to talk about in between? Well, to, but like between 2002 and 2000, I'm just going to like run through some bits. Obviously, um, he was becoming more integral in the squad. Um, the Stuttgart game. Um, he we were, we were playing Stuttgart in the, the UEFA Cup. This was in the run to Seville. We played VFB Stuttgart. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when they had Felix McGat and Kevin Karani and Conor Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, I think it was the first leg where they scored a goal from absolutely nothing, but it was an amazing finish by Karani. 1-0, that's like fuck, it's like the first 15 minutes or something. Aye. And then we equalised that Lambert goal. Do you remember the, the knockdown? Yep. The, and he slices it right, right across the goal, right past the keeper. An amazing finish. And then that's like one each and you're thinking, all right, here we go. And then like 44 minutes, um, Maloney scores a bit of a scuff, like from nothing, scores a goal, like the goalkeeper should have saved it. But then that's it, half time, and then we go in. So that was a, one of the, the most important goals he ever scored for Celtic. Yeah, that was in the first leg. And then Celtic went on and won 3-1 in that game. That was a game that Larson was out injured for, wasn't it? Yeah, Larson was in the stand. Ah, oh, that's right. Because yeah. he broke he his jaw or something. His jaw, I think it was. He had a, a he, someone broke his jaw. I think, I think it was, it was Marvin Andrews. Andrews. It was Marvin Andrews. <laughs> Wade Rovers or something like Marvin Andrews broke his fucking jaw. But um, yeah. He so obviously then we're, we're getting towards the um one of the things that that was very prominent f- from the the feedback that I got was the the, the civil. <laughs> Like I like, unfortunately, I had to watch the highlights again for that, which wasn't very nice. But the the free kick was just, just high wide sails. Like it's not even like it's just like a rugby fucking conversion. It's just absolutely pissed. Just like sails over the bar, and they literally got a man sent off for that free kick. They were they were down to ten men, <laughs> and then obviously the rest is history. But the, so the thing about forward. that free kick though, like so. Yeah, I was I shouted and there was people next to me in the stand, and we I, we were shouting hit it we man, like people look back at actually at a shot yeah I, we we were shouting there was guys beside me I didn't know them they were there with me and we were all separately shouting hit it we man because because we, we knew that he was pretty pretty good at free kicks and people look back on it it's like this the thing where you shout to somebody hit it and then when they hit it you think why the fuck did you hit it you know what I mean yeah. so it's. I think people are being a bit kind of re- revisionist about that free kick. It was a fair, fairly good opportunity. They'd been dealing with corners and free kicks. We'd scored from a couple of corners, but they'd been dealing with things into the box the whole game. A lot of people wanted them to hit the ball. You know what I mean? It's For yeah. that, it kind of really, really be held against them, I don't think. But, I mean, the argument I could make then is that he's, he's booted, he's literally just booted it out the pitch. <laughs> And it's like the, it's, the, it's I think I think it is the last kick of the ball, the last kick of the game. Uh, like that's the that's that after that. And as I say, they got a man sent off. Then Nuno Valenti, I think, it was just fucking clears 
uh, Thompson out. Aye. And then it's the second yellow. And then Maloney steps up and just like sails it to the like over the opposite post. It was time wasting. And I think uh, aye, basically time wasting. <laughs> so then we jump forwards to like some something more positive when we spoke about Celtic playing Partick Thistle a moment ago and he got injured in the under twenty one game mm-hmm. in February two thousand four. Partick Thistle had two specific uh, special players playing for them. Do you know who they were? Oof, you got a chainsaw in there. <laughs> <laughs> Small, like I'm my 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 living room's right at the, the fucking alleyway. Right. Anyway, who, who did who? So let let's 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 go through the. Jared Britton. Specific, right, they had Britain obviously, right? <laughs> but they had someone that Celtic is a Celtic legend on the huddle board. Um, His name's rolled out very often. Charlie Grant. But, nah, nah Charlie Charlie? Grant's not me. Nah. Uh, He's French. Stefan Bonds, Never... brilliant. Yes, <laughs> Ste- Stefan Bonds played against Celtic nice. in that game. And George Cadetti as well. George Cadetti signed a month long contract. What is that all about? I Why would you sign a month long contract? It's ridiculous. So they played in, against Celtic, but yeah, that was just a little side note. Um, this is like when, when, this is now when, again, like he had this injury and, and players, not players, but like fans and, and basically fans used the, the injury and he signed a new contract he basically got injured Celtic went right we like you you're a talent you have got potential we are prepared to support you throughout this year of rehabilitation that you're about to go through so here's a new three-year contract 2004 his contract expires in 2007 which we'll get to right. and then obviously he, he eventually leaves on no he doesn't leave in a Bosman he leaves like three or four months before his duty he's due to expire and obviously Celtic get money for him but nowhere near as much as what they should have so people were aware using this to beat him because they looked after him and every like there was a lot of real spiteful comments and like scathing remarks regarding how Celtic stood by him and fucking supported him like, like this and that and then like, he's uh, just like fuck it I'm out of here like I, I, I'm done but apparently like, he, he actually like, did sign a Bosman though the thing is he signed out apparently he signed a pre-contract and then Aston Villa made it Try to like make, bring it forward, so he yeah. had signed the pre-contract before the bottom. So he would have been yeah. leaving in the Bosman if it wasn't for Aston Villa wanting them now. Yeah. So yeah, he, it's in. But then he was out the first pick, the first team picture for ages. And during this time, this is like when two thousand and four, uh, he gets injured, so he's not back for about a year. And then it's two thousand and five, and then Martin O'Neill leaves. Aye. And then Strachan comes in, and then obviously. Strachan starts to use him. Now we're in two thousand and five, two thousand and six, and this is when he's he has his like absolute like the the best season of his career, his his magnum opus. He's not going to get any any better than this. This is this was when he won the the young player of the year and also the player of the year. Uh, and his stats were extremely impressive. Forty three games, not bad for someone who's extremely injury prone off the back of an you know a long term injury. Forty three games. 16 goals and 28 assists. Oh, brilliant. That's, that's like incredible. From midfield, this is when he was put in midfield. And that's an amazing return from a midfielder. Exactly. I, the, one, the one thing that would, uh, I think, held, held uh, Molloy back in his Celtic career was he was not a, he was not a left-sided midfielder and he was not a centre-forward. Yeah. He's a, he's a midfielder that needs to be played in this kind of three behind a striker, you know, the kind of modern, the 4-5-1 formation. Yeah, and when when Gon Strachan came in, he played his his wingers narrow. Like Nakamura wouldn't be wasn't a proper winger. Yeah, so I think Maloney played the same off the other side, and that really helped Maloney. But in yeah. in, a, in a standard four four two or a four four two midfielder forward, he just wasn't cut out for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, see, see, like after he came back from the long term injury, um, after the year out with the cruciate thing, like he, in Strachan came in, like it's it's really normal in football when someone's been out for ages. A new manager comes in and automatically cunts like that. I can say cunts, can't I? Aye. Right sound. Cunts can cunts can get jump to the conclusion that three times is a bit much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you can beat that out, but like it's it's just natural to think he's not going to get a game. It's the same with like Commons with uh, Rogers coming in. Mm-hmm. Commons has been a great servant for Celtic. Obviously, there's a, there's a difference in age in uh, selling value, but like. Commons is now like people are like Commons is done. That's it. He's been injured, and a new manager's come in. He's finished. So it's testament to Maloney's I don't know his attitude, I guess, that he came back from that horrendous injury and came into the new manager's plans, and then had the best season he has ever had yep. in his career yep. to this day. Yep. So he was played. 
I think, as I say, Neil preferred him as a striker, whereas Strachan deployed him uh, in the left of midfield. I can't remember the formation Strachan played. Can you remember? Ah, uh, it was four four two. Just straight four four two. Right. Okay. Um, <coughs> so as I say, he, he he finished the season, and obviously <laughs> Strachan had the art media games, um, and uh, Maloney came off the bench, both games, home and away. He's like coming back to fitness, and he was played in both our media Brilliant. disasters. But we know how that goes. <laughs> um, and and this is is worth pointing out. Um, he won the sports player of the year, or whatever the fuck it's called, in the young player years I mentioned. And we had Ali Adieri, Dublin, Dewey, Adam Virgo, and players like that in the same team. Yeah. So that's not bad going. When you think about it. <laughs> it's not too bad going. Do you, do you, um, do Dublin now does homes under the hammer. Exactly, he does as well, doesn't he? Yeah. I noticed that during the summer there. Um, <laughs> now, so, we fast forward now to um, the 19th of, of March when we had the Dunfermline uh, League Cup final, mm-hmm. which was it turned out to be the Jimmy Johnston final, basically, because he passed away uh, very close to that date, and obviously we won 3-0. Dion Dublin actually scored in that final, remember? That's right, aye. Sean Maloney, Sean Maloney scored a free kick in that final, and Dion Dublin scored... Uh, in that final, and I've, abs- I've like obviously I've glossed over his absolute number one moment for Celtic. Do you know what that was? The, the thunder bastard. <laughs> exactly the goal against the the deed cunts <sighs> when he just zipped it in from the middle. I mean, it's not often. In fact, Nakamura pretty much scored a similar sort of goal uh-huh. against him. Almost exactly same, same, the same end as well. Same end, almost the identical. But um, and he did go on to play with Nakamura in the same squad. I'm sure because Jack okay. and signed Naka, and so the two of them were in the same team. Um, but then it, the 2006-2007 season, again, niggling injuries. And this is when some of my friends were saying, like, um, and I was asking, it's like, a lot of these injuries were just in his head. Now, obviously, we don't know that, but when someone gets injured so much and they're out for such long times, you know, we have, like, Lustig. Lustig was famous for being that dirt director. Like, forget about that. You know, he's, he's, he was just constantly injured. But McGady was sort of sniffing around at this point as well. Mm-hmm. So McGady's like on the way, like literally on the wings, waiting to um, to take over. Um, and this is when things start to get quite sour for Sean Maloney. Um, he did play, as you pointed out earlier, before we recorded, he did play in the Benfica game at home. What was his contribution in that game again? He not made one of their players and played uh, through to the legend that is uh, Kenny Miller. And, uh, Kenny so Miller scored the fuck goal. 2006, one of Celtic's... Not greatest European victories, but one of Celtic's most recent memorable European victories, which is probably not up for debate, really. It was a great result, and obviously we get scalped thereafter. But anyway, um, during this time, Celtic were trying, as I say, like we gave him a new contract in 2004 for like three years. Mm-hmm. We're getting into the, the last year of his contract, and it's starting to get a bit shite for him in October. Um, Celtic tried to get him to sign a new deal in 2006 in February. But then, like, I was reading an interview with Lawwell, and Law was like, ah, everything was going great. How many's agent were fantastic? And then, all of a sudden, Maloney just changed agents for no reason. He's like, and then everything went shite. So it's clearly, he said, his head turned by this new agent. Probably Willie McKay or fucking Mini <laughs> Viola, so one of these cunts. Do, 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 do. He probably said back then. <laughs> exactly. Back yeah. And then Maloney... Uh, I was reading, like, going back, going back, and on the old BBC website, the really old BBC website, Moni was actually moaning about the the press, about how long it was taking. But he kept, like, he was like, oh, you shouldn't, I'm surprised it's taking this long. I really wanted it to be resolved by now. I'm kind of, I don't really understand it. And then, like, literally, within the, ne- in the next sentence, he goes on and says, but I'm extremely focused. I've given everything to the manager and this, that, and the next thing, kind of, yada, yada, like, the the sort of generic responses uh, footballers right. give from these scenarios, you know, it means absolutely nothing. He stated that it was quite clear though he doesn't want to get to January two thousand and seven and be free to sign for anyone, you know, because when he gets to two thousand and seven, he can sign a pre contract well, and the, then he's away. The rumours on the, the Celtic wiki was that we were offering him eighteen thousand pounds a, uh, a month. Exactly. And no, a week. Uh, it's a, a week. week. Sorry, I. And at that stage, when we were kind of uh, that, we were in the midst of downsizing at that point and 18,000 a week would have been one of our best earners yeah and and that's what I'm saying like he, he got his, he seemed to have his head turned I said earlier on he was a bit of a strange well, he wasn't strange he was quiet never was never in trouble you never read about him never anything bad that I can remember so it seemed a bit strange and he was a 
you know, he's a Celt- he's a Celtic fan. I think. That's the thing I think that wound people up about him was that you can tell that apart from like if you take away the ball boy aspect of Kieran Dimley, you could still tell that he was a Celtic fan. With yep. Sean Maloney, I just I don't think you could ever tell. I just don't think you could ever tell that he was really one of these people. Let me and you that just fucking think about Celtic every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think people kind of expected him to do this. And it came, obviously, after Liam Miller. Yep, and that, that was something that I read a lot about in the, this absolutely scathing fucking thread on Kerry Dale Street. It was just like, we'd seen it with Liam Miller, it's not happening again. Like, people uh, were absolutely fizzing. There, there was like five pages in it. Let's, I don't know, maybe there was about a hundred posts. And not, like, I think maybe one or two were just like, nah, let's just let's see how we go. And da da da. Everyone's like, nah, get him to fuck. Uh, I th- so. People just can't understand it because I can't understand it as well. If I, if if you're supposed to be a Celtic fan, then go go into Villa for seven thousand yeah. extra a week. Fuck off! Yeah. Like I don't care. Yeah. Just fuck off. Then. But who was he signing for? Who was the manager? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Martin O'Neill. And apparently he was very good pals with Petrov. Petrov was there. And again, also and Chris Sutton. I got Chris Sutton wasn't wasn't at Villa. He was at Birmingham. But he was at Villa for one season, I think, when he got his eye injury. Was that right? I uh-huh. thought he just went straight to. I thought he played for Birmingham. Maybe I misread it. Maybe uh, did it? Did he as well? So I like there was a yeah, there was like a Celtic contingent down there. So that's probably quite an attractive thing for him. And was a Celtic contingent in Glasgow? But <laughs> I of course I know I know, but like I don't know. He seemed to have his head turned, and I, I think it, like Lawwell basically was quite clear. It was like it's his agent. Uh-huh. Lawwell being the super honest guy that he was, and like obviously. <laughs> Saying that it was his agent, but as you say, it was eighteen grand um, a week apparently. Um, but uh, uh, law will contradict like that 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 quote, the figure that we both found, and it was on the Celtic Wikipedia, I think. But it was it was from an article. But Lowell actually said the reason that he wasn't signing the new contract. He said the reason's not financial. He said the reason he's not signing is not a financial reason, but he didn't say what the reason was. So I don't know. Like obviously, we don't know. We will never really know. I mean, happened, we had but... two players go to the one position, and uh, McGeevy was probably the one in possession. I mean, he had had the games with under Martin O'Neill against Milan and everything, where he was dancing like take it not dancing past, but to on Paolo Maldini. And yeah, I mean, he was the one that most people thought as the wonder kid. You know what I mean? He he was the one that went on to a twelve million uh, pound transfer. So. And Nakamura was another wing, so it was a no, case no, of exactly, exactly. It's the thing that really didn't. The thing that I found I found quite interesting about this was that we had these two guys coming through at approximately the same time for pretty much the exact same position, and both were pretty fucking class. Uh, it's like it never happens. Like the same position. I know you could argue McGeady is a winger, but you know, depending on who you speak to, forwards, wingers, whatever. But like, really, both were playing on the left hand side. Although Strachan eventually played McGeady on the right because he liked people to play in you know opposite. The opposite side to cut in and whatnot, but um, with his contract expiring anyway. By this point, he'd been at Celtic for like seven years, and he was still only twenty-three. So we're in November, and the contract. Like what I read was, his agents just went, "We're not going anywhere. We're done. We're abandoning these. This, this is done. This, we are stalling this. We are not going to continue with this. And this is November. Mm-hmm. And then I was read the the thread that I was reading, which I, I'll read out. Parts of the thread that was from like November or end of November, and as I say, like people were like, his head's been turned, he's done. Like I can just see it happening. Another Liam Miller's going to happen all over again. And then one of the one of the things that probably really pissed people off was the manner in which he left, because he left on the last day, about an hour to go, thirty first of January. Yeah. And then he was gone. He had a medical, and I think he was actually maybe at an Aston Villa game, like taking it in, like the day before. Can you imagine if he had just? Can you imagine if he just signed the pre-contract and stayed for the rest of the season? I don't know. Do you, right. do you remember when that when the Simon Donald did that with uh, Sheffield Wednesday? No. Fucking hell! Was Sheffield Wednesday great? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just getting no, paid I mean, on the park and everything, man. Exactly, exactly. And he basically left under this mad cloud of shape with 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 Maloney. He just ended up leaving. For, I mean, fair enough. A million pound. We got a million pound for a player that's contract was up in a few months, which is quite good. But let's be honest, he was probably worth a lot more than that. And you know, like players like Petrov actually 
You know, they're like, okay, Celtic, I, I know that I'm worth money and I know that I'm out of contract, but I'm going to sign a deal. An ex- I'm going to sign a contract with you on the basis that you sell me if a bid comes in. So you get your money and I get my move. Uh, and then he did that. Players like Maloney, obviously, other Petro officers are kind of a one-off in that scenario. But So Martin O'Neill basically took him in, took him down to Aston Villa on the last day of the transfer window in January. And, um, yeah, he basically... He won the league in 2001, 2002, 2004, 2006, and then 2001, 2004, 2005. The League Cup, 2001, 2006. He won a lot, right. a lot of trophies. And in the part that I've been speaking about anyway, he won a lot more. And you are going to continue talking about the second half, like the second stint. Aye, aye. So he, he spends a, a, a year and a half in Birmingham. He plays about 30 times. He, he doesn't play that much in the first uh, part of his stint there, like the second half of that season, but he gets about 20 odd games in the next season, so I mean he's playing pretty consistently for them, I don't know if he's starting off the bench or whatever, but he gets a, he gets a few goals as well so obviously he's he's getting games of football, but I don't think he's enjoying it for some reason, I don't know I don't understand how these people can move from Glasgow to Birmingham and then be homesick Right? And maybe it's just the fact that we've done it to different countries and I felt homesickness coming to Germany, but fucking it's, you're in the same plot of land how can you feel home it's to? the same it's the same everything like it was I, I don't really understand that either Maloney as I say he strikes me as a bit of a, a weird not weird though it's like it's a shit term he uses a bit of a strange guy he goes he goes to Chicago for like six months and then moves to Hull uh-huh. why would you why would you not want to live in Chicago but, but, <laughs> like because Hull, Hull were in the championship at that time I'm pretty uh-huh. sure he was, he was going and he went to Hull for six months and I'm just like surely you know sorry he went to Chicago for six months I'm like surely you don't just go, I, I'll go, that's fine. You do your research. You go and look it up and you go, okay, this is this is the lifestyle. I think this lifestyle will be good for me if I'm going to have a family and you start plotting it. I and love his just... tour of fucking England, but Birmingham, Wigan and Hull. I mean, oh, too... absolute fucking <laughs> shit. Folks. So I apologise to anyone that's from those places. I know there is a prominent Celtic fan called Hullboy, so if he's listening, I do apologise. But really, let's be honest, he left Chicago <laughs> and Glasgow to go down there. And like, see, I noticed as well that when he left Celtic, within months he was linked with the return. Aye, to aye, aye, and that's one thing that I'm going to talk about in Chicago Fire, his fire days. Uh, but before we go into that, just so he comes back in uh, the 22nd of August 2008, signs a four year deal. He starts off the 2008 2009 season, he gets about 30 games and he scores uh, 11 goals. So, I mean, he has a pretty good. Who's the manager? The manager at this point is still Gordon Strachan. Right, so and how much did we sign him for? We signed him for allegedly £2.5 million, so we took a £1.5 million uh, pound hit on that. Right. And so he's coming back to Celtic, but he must be like, what, 25? Aye, he must be about aye, 25, 24, 25, I would say. Aye. Right, okay. Moving on to the next season, his, his appearances go down again. He gets an Achilles injury. Only four games... Yeah, after after the Hun game on the fourth of October two thousand and nine, he only plays four more games that season. So he's just basically he comes in, has a good, pretty good season, and then he just falls apart the next season. He, he, he barely plays for us, and then after that Achilles injury, the following season, he gets injured in November with an an- with a needs ankle surgery, and he's out until April. So we're talking about him coming back for three seasons, but actually been out for massive chunks of two of those three seasons. Yeah. So it was just a case of uh, he never really got any consistency with us. But it mm. seemed to be when he went to places like Wigan and when he went to Birmingham and when he went, he went to Chicago and Hull, he didn't seem to have these problems. And yeah. that, for a lot of Celtic fans that I went to the games with, was where the problem lay because they thought it was in his head. And yeah. they thought... That he could deal with the pressure of playing for shitty teams, no offence to, to Wigan and Hill, but he could not deal with the pressure of having to perform for Celtic. What do, what do you think it's, about that? It's a winning mentality. It's, it's something they say that often, like the winning mentality. Players just cannot adapt to to Celtic. I can't remember a player who's at Celtic recently and they just can't, they just, I can't remember who it was. Like, Fucking Stuart Armstrong, man. You could say the same about him. That's exactly who it is. It's Stuart Armstrong. They just don't have the mental capacity. That's exactly who it is. To, to come to a club like Celtic and actually make the step up and be expected to win every single game, you just don't have the, the capacity to process that. And maybe Maloney, it seems I don't know. He seems 
as I say, he's, 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 a, he's a very divisive figure, and this is why we're talking about him. Like, it makes complete sense to think that going to these places and you know, he's playing long, playing football, and he's, he's scored against decent teams in the Premiership. He scored against Man United, he scored against Chelsea, he scored against Arsenal. Again, yet, yeah, it, again, I think the fa- a big factor against him was the formations. We were always playing 4 4 2. And he was yeah. going to these teams that were maybe sitting back a bit and had five in midfield, which gave him a bit more freedom. Uh, yeah, he's not as I said earlier. He's not a left-sided midfielder. He needs to be in that the, the final third of the park on the left hand side. Yeah. and I think that always went against him for us. He's probably better at being a, 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 at an, a counter-attacking team. I would say. Yeah, I mean, he as like one of my friends said that he's um he. Uh, he scored a lot of goals for Wigan, um, which showed that he could. And we're talking the Premiership as well. He's sort of, you could you could say that he excelled in the Premiership because he's scoring goals for really shite teams. Mm-hmm. So he has some. He has the ability. I never thought it was an issue of his ability. He always had. He's always had something. He was always. I always thought, like in my opinion, I was. No surprise here. I think he was the always the optimist view when it comes to Celtic. Every, everything's rosy kind of thing. But I always thought he was a great player. I always like really really did rate. Um. Maloney and I know I've not asked you what did you think you tend to like dislike players like Griffiths and stuff that which, uh, <laughs> no. we can talk about but <laughs> no I like what did you think I, of Maloney I, I liked I liked Maloney to a certain extent I didn't I preferred him did uh, I just thought he was a better player yeah but Maloney just seemed to me to not have the heart it just didn't seem to have I, I think it worked I think it worked against him I just didn't see that kind of desire as a Celtic fan to actually I don't care if our managers are Celtic minded. I don't care if our players are Celtic minded, but I want our players to be showing an actual love for playing football and a love for like winning and things like that. You can, you just never saw that in Maloney's face. You know what I mean? He just never seemed yeah. to be that kind of overawed by anything. I, as I say, like <coughs> bless you. As I say, like he just came across. He wasn't the most passionate of players. He wasn't the vocal. He wasn't. I, I actually think he might have captain Celtic at some stage. Just it did aye. Inst- aye, but you know he's just like I don't know. He just struck. He just struck me as a as a bit of a almost a loner or something like that. Like one of like let's let's. I just want to talk about like comparing him with McGeady and one of the guys are, are having a WhatsApp chat with a big group of Celtic fans, and he said it wasn't even arguable. He was better than McGeady, and Forrest is also more successful than McGeady. Now the first part I agree with. A lot of people are bitter against McGeady as well, though. I, I think there's a lot of bitterness against McGeady. McGeady was one of the players that would try... He would take everything on and try and yeah. win the game. Maloney would push everything away. Yeah. It would have been a good idea to do a, a, a podcast just comparing Maloney, uh, Forrest and McGeady because they're all similar players. They've all come through Celtic. The French all are technically Celtic fans. We know that yeah. those two of them are anyway. I mean, so Maloney's definitely having a better fucking autumn of his career anyway. I mean, McGiddy's, since yeah. McGiddy moved to Moscow, he's basically fallen apart. But I think pre-Moscow, yeah. he was a better player than Maloney. But I don't know. Yeah. I think it's just in people's preferences. One thing I've seen here on, on the, the Wikipedia from when he moved to Wigan, it says, so he moved in September of 2011 and he struggled to break into the first team. And uh, Maloney admitted his fitness was lacking a little bit when he joined the club. So Martinez felt that Maloney needed, needed more time to settle in and he never played until March of the next year. Oft. So he was five months out of the team because his, his fitness wasn't up to scratch. Oft. But after that, obviously, he done, done well at Wigan. I think he got uh, 15 goals and 79 appearances. So right. so, so, so what, what was the circumstances around him leaving Celtic for the second time? And, and in his second stint, what was his um, what was his outstanding moment, if he even had one, when he was at Celtic for the second part of his career? I mean, there wasn't really. I don't, I don't think there was anything outstanding, and not, not much I could remember anyway. Not much I could uh, find. He scored, but he finished his first season with five goals. As I said, the second season he was out basically four games after October, hmm. and that was a Tony Mowbray season. So it's not as if there was much to. Right home about it anyway. Yeah, we've 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 we've, we've chopped that up. That's, that's done. <laughs> and then the, the following season, he, he started well under Lennon. I mean, at Lennon was given yeah. everyone a kind of lease of life. But then November he's out until April. So I mean, he's one he's one of the few players that's actually managed to play under, you know, relatively, rel- well, not relatively successful recent Celtic managers. He's played under Strachan, O'Neill, and Lennon and Mowbray. Well, let's let's <laughs> success. We've we we, we done a podcast episodes, whatever on that. But 
Aye, it seems like his second stint was just a pile of shit, and it was. As we were like, saying there, like, it may have been something to do with the managers changing as well. Like three, yeah. three coaches in three seasons, it's not yeah. ideal. But I think no, he would have been a good uh, dialer player. I think he would have fit quite uh, well in that dialer formation. Actually, I've got a friend who's adamant that. <coughs> Are you okay? Ah, it's just so hurts. Right. <laughs> I've got a friend who's who who is adamant that if a player leaves a club. Then they should never really go back to the club because it never works out. Although I've, prov- I've, I've proven them wrong with like Matic and players like that, and Fabregas and PK and players like that going back to the clubs that they were at. But uh, he is right with with Maloney. Like the second stint was just didn't live up. And two point five million seems like a bit of a waste in the end. And he only won like what did what 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 was his? Tr- I know the the trophy hall in the part I spoke about his first part with Celtic was like it's huge. Like what was his trophy hall in the second stint? Well he never won the season in his first season under Strachan because that was the season Strachan lost it. Mowbray never won the league and uh, Lennon never won the league in his first season either did he? Because that would have been No, no he did he, went, he did win the league in his first season. Well full season. No did it because his first full season was against the Miff wasn't it? No, no but, mm, well I, I, I'm just it was just sort of Pointing out there that Lennon picked up the reins in like April or something like that after Mowbray, as we spoke about previously. But did they not win some? Did they not win the Scottish Cup in 2011? Uh, he probably he probably won a cup, he didn't they win the league anyway. No, yeah, he won, the, he won the cup, but like it seems like the second part of his career was just a damp squib. Indeed, uh, you know, it's just it wasn't it wasn't worth coming back for, and yeah, we didn't benefit from him, and he didn't benefit from us, so yeah. But I don't know, yeah. like, he's probably one guy that you'd think, as you were saying uh, earlier, when he left, when he was at Wigan, there was uh, talk of him coming back, and uh, I was looking at when he was at Chicago Fire, I think there was like a, a rumour that he was going to come back in one of the windows or something like that. Yeah. I looked at his, uh, I looked at Chicago Fire fan forum at the time, and they fucking hated him. Yeah. I'm pretty sure... It, it, he was obviously good enough to play in the league, and I'm pretty sure that he scored goals over there. But again, it just indicates his the mentality that he may have, where he's like moving around and like he moved to Birmingham and instantly came back to almost instantly came back to Celtic, then moved to Chicago, and like you're like, oh, that's a good move. Like you know, he's you, that's the, when you hear of a player like that moving to that league, you're thinking, right, that's that's the twilight of his career. He's he's going to go over there and. You know, he's, that's him for a, that's him for a few years, like Gerard or something like that. Aye. Then he's there for six months and he comes back and you're just like, why did you go over there in the first place? What was what, like, what were you thinking? I know. I know. It doesn't make sense. I, I, clearly, it wasn't for the money because he would make more money in the Premiership, but it just didn't really add up. But um, what 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 um, I want to ask is like the Twitter. Do you have anything from Twitter? We seem to have a lot of chat on Twitter regarding. Aye, it was uh, there was a lot going down about Sean Maloney. A lot of people had things to say. Let's hear. So we've got uh, Jonathan James is at 88J James on Twitter. I said, loved him, unlucky with injuries and left too soon. Would still have him back. I've got a feeling that some of these are going to be completely fucking polar opposite. So <laughs> let's, let's go to the next one. Green Ouija at Green Ouija said, the closing minutes in Seville, that free kick, hashtag dead ball expert. <laughs> yep. At Lyle Davidson, FJ says, good player but didn't like that he jumped every time English clubs showed any interest, especially after all the injuries. Again, that was a kind of thing with uh, Lee Miller as well, because Lee Miller had been out injured for about two years, Celtic paid his wages. Yep. And uh, fans really hate that when you when uh, a player gets paid when they're injured and then just leaves right after it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's understandable. Uh, exactly. <coughs> Sorry to everyone else, I've uh, got the cold and that's why it's shit's happening. Yeah. Uh, at Green White 78, love the wee guy, just a pity he had so many injuries. <laughs> a lot of them are very similar. Uh, at the bloke at 109, he was great for us and anyone who says differently didn't see him with NACA. Yeah. Cameron Hutton at Fat Pilo says, he was the very first player I ever got a picture with. Always been one of my favourites since he could punch me. I would still feel the same. So a bit yeah. of loyalty. I still, I still think he's got one of the best handles. Fat Pirlo, aye, aye. Ah, it's a belter, man. Uh, at TT Zola was unlucky at Villa. A very good player, so much more effective than Miggy ever was. Him and Nakit in the same team was sublime. Sublime, I think, has gone a bit far, but uh, yeah. At Muck and Murth. Should have stuck around instead of going to Villa. That move stunted his development. His late Seville free kick was dreadful too. 
Yeah, it's just see, never going to go see, over that. See, see, because it, like that that sticks in people's memory because that game was like, like that 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 was it. That was this generation's Lisbon, you know. Uh-huh. And like for that to be the last thing that happened in that game is just it's just bad luck. It happened to be Maloney. It could be any player, and they would probably have the same feelings. It's just because it was the way it panned out, and we lost that game after all the, everything that happened. And then he has the last kick of the ball and puts it out, and then that's it. And they're like, well, it just happens to be him. So there's there's a lot of like um, vitriol towards him for that, which is probably unjust. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you were saying about watching the highlights for that. I don't think I've ever watched them all the way to the end. Nah, I've got the Rudy I mean, Savone DVD, but I watched it until like the second go. <laughs> I know. I just don't have it. I just don't have it. Any more from Twitter? Yep. Yeah, uh, at uh, Barakne Boy said, "I'm grateful we shite fucked off for more money when we supported him through if." through a bad injury should never took him back yeah at Chris1888 could have been a great if he hadn't been injured all the time still vital to Scotland national team even today though a very good point that goal against Ireland was fucking awesome ah, he seems to excel in a, again in a squad a team that doesn't necessarily have a winning mentality no no bloke109 said uh, Chicago didn't light his fire question mark Oof. ooh yeah at FM Celtic, better player than McGiddy deserve more plaudits. Suffered horribly from injuries and pressure. First in training, last to leave. Hmm. Again, that kind of idea of pressure. I don't think he dealt with it very well. At just yeah. at just woke up. Excellent player, but could but could have been better. Was it was it only us he had injury problems with? Might be worthwhile checking that. I think it was. I don't. I mean, apart from that fitness thing at uh, Wigan, I think he's played pretty consistently for teams. As we spoke about, like a bit of a mental midget and. Well, he's a midget anyway but a mental midget as well and to, so, one of my friends said a lot of the injuries were probably in his head which Aye. there's no way we can ever find out and it's, we'll never really know but there's an argument to be made that that is true and that he was just you know like Lustig Lustig had that any time like I remember it was a game was it last season it was against Malmo maybe or it was against one of the teams that we fucking got scudded out under Dyla and <laughs> Lustig got halved but I don't think it was a bad tackle and he was crying at the side of the pitch. He was like actually crying, mm-hmm. like sobbing. And they're like, ah, he's, he's actually going to die. And then like he was back for the next game. I'm like, all right, he's actually all right. It's probably just somebody gave him a cuddle or something like that. And he's like, ah, it's fine. And th- there must be a difference in the way that managers handle injuries as well because you can see the difference between like, Lustig before Ronnie and after Ronnie. Like, uh, yeah. Lustig has been pretty consistent for the last couple of years, whereas before that, he was all over the place. I, I mean, Dyla always, like, let's, let's not have to Dyla that do Dyla chat but Dyla boost but um, Dyla always Dyla not always but Dyla had mentioned about not rushing players back no but although there was a player that he rushed back whose name escapes me and then he's not great tonight it's Leighton's pain and it's hot as fuck <laughs> but he rushed back a certain player but there was another player that it was Lustig for example he just let in Forrest as well you know Forrest used to get used all the time by Lennon and he would rush him back that's right whereas Dyla was like no you take your time and you, you, you know you relax and same with Lustig. Uh, uh, but I, I think I think it, as we say, like a bit of a mental midget. Uh, any other anything else? I think there's one more tweet. Yeah, we've got uh, one from uh, at Politis Would you? That's the one. Underused by uh, Martin Neal, talented midfielder, scored some great goals. Young player of the year, and player of the year in the same season. One of our best presidents in the last fifteen years. That kind of as, uh, what you say. Are you are you Politis uh, Would you? <laughs> no, but. Maybe the MS stands for motherfucker. Uh, Talented motherfucker scored some great goals. Uh, and before Bias. before we do finish the Twitter, I just have a couple of general ones that are not for Maloney. Maybe just go over them really quickly. One is from uh, at the Galatron, who's uh, does a few podcasts. He's hosts the uh, Ninety Minute Cynic. He says yeah. we'll enjoy the pods, gents, especially from the last pod. Rapid being our fucking assholes. We never rapid or mentioned my father's face, tongue to thunder. Yeah, and the, the, at the boy Matt agreed he said a great a great pod wasn't born yet during the game but remember reading up during Europa League rematch can you imagine what Twitter would have been like if something like that happened today I know yeah so aye and uh, so, also the place we would like us to do one in the Partizan Belgrade uh, game but I think we've done it too many of the almost victories recently so we maybe can aye. leave that for a few few months yeah yeah I mean um that's we, we kind of covered parts of that era as well, so like we maybe I don't know suggestions for the next one would be good. And now that things are back to normal with regards to us being available now, and you know things have calmed down after the summer, still in summer, um, we have the time to try and knock these out maybe on a weekly basis. But I just want to go through a few of my pals' views. As I say, like some of them are very polarising. Um, 
But as I say, one of my mates says he never really done anything amazing. I was like, okay, I think he did. <laughs> That's my opinion. But anyway, another one says it feels like he's been around for ages and he's done very well considering his physical attributes compared to others that preceded him. Tall and physical players preceded him and were kind of the thing, whereas Maloney came in and done a job as a wee guy, which we kind of touched on. Um, he scored a few for Wigan against bigger teams. Like, as I say, he scored, I'm sure he scored an amazing free kick against Arsenal. I think it was. I was looking through some of his goals. It's difficult to find his Celtic goals. Most of his goals were from Wigan. And uh, um, the best goal he ever scored was against the Dead Cunts. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> fair enough. And um, when Larson was in the stands and injured, he stepped up and scored. It was uh, referring to the Stuttgart, I think. Arguably Celtic's most talented player during those times, which is I agree with. It's, it's, it's debatable. If, if he was, you know, obviously during the time he had last night, but Maloney did have a lot of talent uh, and Maloney offered more than Forrest just to finish what, what the, the, the WhatsApp chat was giving it Nice I don't know would, now like uh, if you had the three players who would you rather have? Maloney, McGee or Forrest Aye, right now. probably Maloney Aye. probably Maloney because Maloney can score more, Maloney scores more goals I mean they're, they're like Forrest and McGee are more comparable because they're out and out wingers although in my opinion, McGeady's a winger. Some people tell he's a number 10. But for me, McGeady was always a winger, whereas Forrest is just a balls-out winger. And as we, as you mentioned, like Maloney could sort of play in a few positions in XL. Oh, you know, yeah. he's not a forward as such. He's not a winger. He's, he's kind of just something in between. Don't really know what he was, but in my opinion, he was good. Um, in my opinion, he was... I thought... In my, like, that's why I wanted to do it, because I, I believe that he was a good Celtic player. I thought he contributed towards the history of Celtic. Obviously, he's good some big goals but overall he you know he scored a lot of goals over his time won a lot of trophies as I alluded to he's like won I don't know maybe 10 trophies as, as a Celtic player which is a lot you know aye aye I think for someone who who was around that long yeah he did well but could have done better yeah and I, I, I think like yeah, if, I mean, if most players had like 9 seasons with us you would expect you would expect to be talking about a few more like awesome moments Especially for yeah. their forward, and uh, yeah, it's just not enough, you know. Yeah, I mean, ten years is technically due a testimonial. Bring him, but bring I like him I, <laughs> I was I was reading a thread on uh, Kerry Dale Street about him, and like people are like, total and utter bollocks. I have no sympathy for young Frodo Maloney. <laughs> people are like, he should be dropped from a high building, things like that. He can get to fuck his. This is like November, the end of November, like three months before he goes, and someone's at. Like, he can get to fuck as far as I'm concerned. He's really pissed me off with his attitude. Leave Miller all over again, blah, blah, blah. And I, I've got a pure raft of, like, and, like just cherry-picking, not even cherry-picking, just selecting at random, like, quotes, and all of them are pretty much the same. He's a dick, he's this and he's that. And it's mad to, like, football fans are just, like... There's a couple from that thread that I wanted to mention. Uh, I'd sell him for peanuts. Seriously, actual peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> and another one is if Osama bin Laden could hide so repeatedly and successfully in plain sight he could have lived under the CIA's nose until the age of 150 yeah <laughs> so I, like, as you said split opinion right down the fucking middle man. well that's why we're doing it I, I thought that was the, a good reason to do the pod because he's like divisive but in my opinion he done a lot for Celtic and I feel like when we do this I'm always like the good guy not the good guy such I'm a good guy right but I'm always the guy that's like you know try to make things sound very optimistic where you're just like nah that's the way it should be that's... <laughs> I'm the good <laughs> you're the uh, you're the bad cop and I'm the good cop but, <laughs> there yeah. must be a player you didn't like surely uh, I wonder if there's somebody you didn't like fucking, that like. I fucking hated Landry and Glamour oh so did I so. nah I'm only joking I didn't really mean that <laughs> I'm actually joking I don't, I, to be honest I couldn't think I'm not one of these Fans that actually hate players, I'm not. I'm not into that. I don't believe in like hating anything to do with Celtic. Aye, I, I just don't do it. I'm, I'm too much of an optimist, man. Even with Celtic and beat three now, I'm like, right, we're still going to win. We're still going to win. Ten minutes to go, Matt. We're still going to win. Like, it's stupid. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not the most optimistic person in daily life as well, so I don't know why I'm so fucking happy with Celtic. But anyway, and that moves and moves us on. Sean Maloney's over. We have a relatively big game next week. Barcelona away. Uh, indeed, uh, and you're you're going there, I believe. Yep, I'm still trying to. Um, I've just booked my transport today. Uh, I'm going to go to Sulu first for a couple of days. Nice. Just like why buy a pool because I've got family there, and then um, trying to find 
uh, transport to get up there, um, up the road to Barcelona for the game. I was going to sit in the Barcelona end because I want to see the game better, but I've opted to sit in the Celtic support. Have you got a ticket? I, my mate, who is a season ticket holder, texted me and said uh, he can get me a ticket. So nice. I'll, I'll, it's, cheap, it's actually cheaper to sit in the Celtic end. And you've, you've been to the new camp for a, for a Celtic game? I was at the, 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 the David Marshall one. Right, so you, you know, like, you're away up. You know, you know how it is, like, you're away uh, up fucking wrong. high. It's like you're struggling to see the game, but I'm I'm mainly going up there for the for the crack and the buzz and that and just um I could have went and sat in the the the, uh, the home end and it would be fine and it would be great and it'd still be like you know get to see the game better, but I'd rather sit in with the Celtic fans. So I'm looking forward to it. I go Monday and I'll be in Barcelona Tuesday and then back to Salou and then back to here on Wednesday. But I am quite looking forward to. It. Obviously, there's another game in between. Here and then, and it's um, I don't really have a lot to say on what's going to happen this weekend. I just expect us to win without much of a reply. We've won one, we've lost one, so let's make it two one to us against the, this mob. Against the new fans. I mean, Celtics just now, like Celtic. I think we've played ten games so far, and this is including the Red Imps and the, you know, like the games that we've played. We've played ten games. I think we've won seven, lost two, drawn one, and I think we scored twenty six goals. <laughs> And we've got Patrick Roberts coming back. Griffiths has obviously, he's been struggling with a niggly injury, but he's still been playing and he's still been scoring. And obviously that's why Dembele, he's been coming off the bench and replacing him after the 60 minutes. You can see when Griffiths gets taken off, he's pure feeling, but it's obviously being protected. And, and, and then he pulled out the Scotland squad with Tierney. Uh, so the front three of Sinclair, Griffiths and Forrest. I mean... So would you keep Forrest in? Ah, he has to play. He's, he's on form. And I would... You, I guarantee you that um, Horace will probably come off in the second half for Roberts and just let Roberts run riot because Roberts will be ready because he's been injured and he's been he's been. I'm not sure if he was playing with England under twenty once. I'm sure I read somewhere that he was playing with like England under twenties or something like that. I, I saw it I'm on Twitter, sure. but then when I looked to see what, what the game score was, I couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I know that, like, for example, it's. Because the under twenty ones are playing tonight, the Spanish under twenty ones are playing in Sweden tonight. I think they got beat. No, um, they got beat. But anyway, I Roberts just let him off the leash in the second half. Obviously, Dembele as well. I, I, honestly, man, I don't have much to say on this game. I'm extremely excited for the game, and I mean the last game was a fucking nightmare, <laughs> an absolute nightmare. But too much has changed. Too much has changed in the way things are. And the way that Rogers is, like he's happy to just like, right, this isn't happening. I'm going to change it. This isn't going to happen. I'm going to change it again. He's not afraid to do that. Uh, so right. obviously, we we dial that. It was just like, no, nope, we're just going to keep going until it happens. So, so if what's it's not team? working at the week, De Vries, Lustig, Toure, Svechenko, Tierney, Brown, Beaton, Rogic, Sinclair, Griffiths, Forrest. Ah, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the same as me. I, I, I would throw Gambo in, man. Get one. He's rapid. He will come on in the second half, I think. But I mean, the back, like the back four, is like shaping up to be pretty decent. Like Toure and Eric and Tierney. Obviously, Lustig is the kind of weak link. But we brought in Gamboa, and then Brown and Beaton. There's a big argument that they can't play with each other, which, is, which probably has some weight. Uh, but Rogic has to start. I mean, Rogic is fucking class, man. Right. He's absolutely clear. We, 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 I'm, I'm very happy with Celtic just now. I, know, I told you I'm an optimistic fan, but in general, like things are going extremely well, and we're at home. And li- listen, at home, Rogers' first, you know, first real big big game, and we have the standing section, and all the season tickets, like you know, we've sold. Thousands and thousands and thousands of season tickets. It's going to be absolutely fucking rocking. It just feels like that six two game, man. It feels like we're going. In, that was the first Martin O'Neill game, and this is the first Rogers game. You know, it just feels obviously against two different it's teams, a, but it's the same fans. You know what I mean? So, it's a parallel. I, there's, there's, people keep saying it's like the the O'Neill and the Rogers thing is like it's just sort of the echo in each other. But I I don't I don't have any concerns. I don't I don't know. Like nothing about them concerns me at all. I'd like. I don't, I don't know, like, Joey Barton, I don't give a fuck. I, I don't even want to talk about them, to be honest, but <laughs> nothing about them concerns me. I'm just confident Celtic will destroy them. Did you see we that tackle see... from the, the Kamalik boy? Oh, it was, 
It was a, it was, it was a fair tackle. It was a 50 50. He went for, he went for the ball. And the boys, no. Hey. I was, like, he's like, if, if, if he hadn't moved his, moved his, his foot, it would have snapped his leg, no. which would have been a, a right shame, <laughs> to be honest. I do think that the problem Celtic have recently is the, um, is conceding goals. We do concede goals, but, you know, we score more goals than the other team almost always. And the mentality that we have to come back, you know, we, with the Aberdeen one and then the St Johnston game, we come back and we score a couple of quite rapid goals and we didn't really have that mentality under Dyler. So even if we do concede a goal on, on Saturday, I expect us to go and score two off the back of that. Just, just, they just annoy us. Uh, so, and, and just to, to ask about the transfer window, are, are you satisfied with it? Obviously, it's stunning and dusted. Are you satisfied um I, I really 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 wanted another sentiment uh, and uh, we, we have this doubt about Beaton and Brown because of last season and uh, Brown has changed so if Brown has changed maybe Beaton will as well or maybe if Brown has changed then Beaton could just stay the same way that we still have a good mix in there you know like I just mm. I just don't know we, t- we haven't seen enough games but I wanted a fucking like a defensive midfielder a win, no. a win Yama. Aye, I mean, well, a win Yama was a was a prospect, and as another podcast was saying, and, and I remember this there was another podcast. I can't remember which one. It was probably the Celtic Underground, the most recent one, and they were saying like when Yama was a prospect, making many people were like, when he was playing, when Yama didn't have a great start to Celtic career, he was like, you no, know, he, he never played for months and months and months, and he was like, when he did come in and play, he wasn't like amazing. Eventually, he became part of the team, but. I, like think about it like this: Rogers has been in since the first of June or something like that, yeah. and that's the one transfer window. How many how many managers get to make all the changes that they want in one transfer window? I know. I mean, when you so when you like, look at Martin O'Neill, he never brought Lennon in at that point. He hadn't brought Hartson in or anything like that. So yeah. I mean, he was still. If you look at that team from the six two game, it's not exactly the kind of uh, Martin O'Neill team that we would come to know. So yeah, I mean, Stephen Mahe played. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, but I I mean overall like. Optimistic as as I always am, I guess. And, and and while I was like waiting for a you know a surprise transfer to to come up in the in the centre mid, and I agree with you, and I've I've, I've mentioned before about getting a, a, an extra defensive winning because we let Johansson go, which was probably the right thing to do. But I don't know, we feel maybe a little bit light there. McGregor, I never mentioned McGregor. There's a chance McGregor might play on Saturday as well because he's he seems to be liked uh, by Rogers. But if he plays, yeah, I mean, the tra- Rogic plays. If he plays, Rogic has to play. Like that's that's the thing. Rogic has to play unless he drops bit on and plays McGregor as the as the, the defensive midfielder. I, I don't know. Well, Beaton was playing tonight uh, against uh, Italy, so I mean he might. What was the score? Yeah, they could beat three one against ten men in Italy. Chiellini gets sent off after fifty minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Israel are not a great side anyway. So I seen Spain won eight 0 tonight against the mighty Liechtenstein. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's not it's not a difficult one, but uh, fucking Bobby the, Snodgrass, that's who we should have signed then. I know, I, and there was rumours that he was he was getting into Celtic, but um, apparently he's on uh, this is his last season contract. As a, all oh, right, okay, so, and I'm pretty sure he is a Celtic. Ah, he is pretty diehard. So I mean, uh, if he is, then fucking put his signature where his mouth is and get signed. Well, I, I mean, with these players, they're coming from the Premiership, and if they're out of contract, then they're doing all right. They'll just go to another Premiership. They'll just make a side step. He probably just sit, sidestepped it. He's at, he's at Hull, isn't he? Aye. So he's just going to So what do you think he's getting paid there? He's probably on fuck knows, man, about twenty five grand a week, thirty grand a week. See, I, I would, I was going to say about forty, but I would, I wouldn't be surprised. But see if it was, see if it's forty, and Celtic offered him twenty five. If he doesn't take that, he, I would say he's not a proper Celtic fan. <laughs> yeah, well. That just to, well, we were coming talking about fifteen grand a week. I know, for fuck's sake. Per week. I know, I know, I know, I know. But we're just splitting hairs here anyway. But um, I like what about your team for the Saturday? What would you choose? I the same. I would probably pick Gimbon because I think uh, Lustig has actually had a, a couple of mistakes this season already. But think about it. We, you did allude at the, before we recorded that Rogers is not shy to chuck people in. No. But Lustig, Lustig's been all right, man. I mean, I. I to be honest, like Lustig is going to be replaced sooner than later, and Gamble will come in, and, uh, and he does have eight, 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 eight for for pace in FIFA, so he's going to be good. And they they are uh, it's that uh, we guy that used to be my paper boy, uh, what's his name Barry Mackay. He's was it actually was he actually a paper uh, boy? He's from Barhead. Uh, he actually is 
family were not Rangers fans. So, right. uh, but Barry with an IE as well. Aye, with an IE. I think they, mm. they actually started the two of them. It's actually his older brother was uh, the one that everyone was expected to be a player. And uh, both of them played for Kilmarnock youngsters. And yeah. then uh, the older boy just didn't make it at all. And then Barry yeah. came through. So I think it would be him that's on their left hand side. So he's pretty fast. So maybe Gambo against him would be. I don't think we're going to have to fucking deal with what they're doing good up front. But, you know, like matching up's a pretty good idea. Yeah. No, I mean, Toure, Eric, Tierney, satisfied, like, happy with him. Um, I don't have any issues with the defence, maybe just the right-back position, but we, we strengthened there. It's like, hey, we, overall, the, we've strengthened in almost every position, apart from midfield. Aye. If anything, we're, we're lighter in midfield, but that's how it goes. And, like, uh, Rogic, if, he's, if he starts and he plays 90 minutes, then he's a fucking star. He's, uh, he's he's been playing ninety minutes a lot. This like, this whole myth about he can't he can't do it he can't do this he can't do that and it's just like a lot of shit. His goal the other week was fucking amazing. Aye. He's just class. Like he just scores wonder goals for fun. <coughs> and the fact that he signed a new contract as well and like this stuff this the wave of positivity is still going. He always sounds you know, like, so fucking like, delighted to be here as well, man. Rogic. Aye. Yeah. He was just. He seems crazy. he seems very level. Seems very grounded. She seems normal. Aye. He just seems like a regular guy, which is cool. So it's not like controversial or anything. And that free kick, man. Uh, fucking hell. No, I know it's like passing it into the net, Aye. like it's like beyond the joke. So yeah, Saturday I'm excited, and then Tuesday the new camp. I mean, doesn't get like bigger than that, you know, back to back games. Tuesday new camp. A uh, couple of weeks later, Man City at home. And I'm really excited because. David Silva is fucking amazing. You get to see Aguero, De Bruyne, uh, Leroy Sane, Guardiola. I don't think he's ever been to Celtic Park. No. Uh, you know, there's a lot of players in there that have never, you've never really seen at Celtic Park. And then obviously Gladbach. So we, we want to do a wee thing on on the on the podcast regarding. Um, you want to talk about Gladbach? I and I'm going to talk a little bit about Spanish football. Just a tiny little. Just to kind of like where, accentuate like the, the broad aspect, the fact that I'm in Germany, he's uh, Tony's in Spain, why mm. not talk a wee bit about where we are? So, a few people had spoken about like not really knowing much about Gladbach, so I just wanted to kind of mention things about them from last season and the way they've started this season and stuff like that. Last season, they finished fourth, obviously, to, to qualify. They finished fourth, but actually conceded more goals than anyone inside the top 11 teams in the league. So, so they're just scoring hundreds of goals. They sco- they scored. They actually scored much more than Leverkusen, who finished above them. So they actually also uh, lost thirteen games, which was more than any team in the top eight. Who's who's the manager? Favre has left, hasn't he? Favre has gone. It is what's his name? Is it Wolfgang Wolf? Wolfgang Wolf. Uh, where is it? Where is it going? It's Sh- Schubert. Who was? I think he came in as like a, a kind of an auxiliary a, guy, like a as a caretaker. A caretaker, and then he just got kept on because he was doing well. Aye. Yeah, yeah. So they lost, obviously, Shaka, Shaka, uh, for thirty-five. Granit million. Shaka. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They lost him, and uh, they didn't really. They haven't really spent that much money. They, they signed the uh, Vestergaard from. Uh, Bremen, who's a 24 year old Danish centre back, and mm. now they've basically got the Danish central defence because uh, they've, they've partnered him up with Christiansen. Both of them actually, they don't have Sviachenko, mate. They don't have him, but they, both of those guys played for Denmark uh, last night in the, in the international game. So they've got they've got that link up in the defence. They've got Jan Sommer, who's obviously the, the Swiss goalkeeper. Christiansen's on loan from Chelsea, is he not? I think he is. Uh, uh, he's, on, he's one of the 888 players that Chelsea have out in loan. Yeah. They've got uh, maybe somebody you'll uh, recognise, uh, Alvaro D- Dominguez at left back, I think it is. Alvaro Dominguez? He played for he sp- Atletico Madrid for years and then he moved to Madrid. Right, okay. Is he Spanish? Yep. Alright, okay. Alvaro Dominguez, I. Uh, uh, so, they don't actually have much up front. Raphael. Raphael was a great player. He's 31 years old. He's still pretty much like shit. He's getting better and better, isn't uh, he? Uh, he's a good player. And they've also got Joseph D- Dermich, who I went to see him a few years ago when he played for Nuremberg, and he was a, mm. he was the next big thing then. He went to Leverkusen for like 12 million, but he's basically fucked about for the last couple of seasons and landed up at Bunch of Gladbach. So 
he might come good I don't know but he's not done much in the last couple of years he's obviously a Swiss internationalist so I mean uh, but their main threat comes from the kind of speed in their attacking midfield so you've got players like Herman Patrick Herman German international mm-hmm. you've got uh, Stindl also German uh, what's his name Torgen Hazard Torgen Hazard uh, obviously Eden's uh, brother and Jonas Hoffman and uh, uh, Andre Hahn these are all very fast kind of uh, wide count- they're a counter attacking team so they've got, ca- they've got mm. a counter attacking midfield the big signing that they made this summer with their uh, Shaka money was actually to try and replace him. They got Christoph Kramer. I spoke oh, from from Leverkusen. Aye. So I mean, Christoph Christoph Kramer played for Mission Gladbach one year ago on loan from Leverkusen. Mm. That's when he basically became like a household name. Went back to Leverkusen, like who owned them, and just fucking like faded for a year. I don't know if you remember, he was a guy that got knocked out by the ball in the, the World Cup final in two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So since then, he's. I was speaking to a German mate a few weeks ago, and he was basically saying that Christoph Kramer just seems to have uh, regressed a little bit. He's still only twenty five years old. Yeah. Got the potential there. Don't know if he's going to be a good enough replacement for for Schalke. This season, they've started the first league game one two winning against Leverkusen, obviously one of the best teams in Germany. But this is only the third competitive game of the season, so we've got that big kind of. Uh, uh, lead on them by what, seven or eight games we've played more what fitness levels and whatnot. <coughs> excuse me yeah exactly so and sharpness aye uh, so it's there for the I mean I think I think they're going to give us a good game it's going to be a really interesting attire I kind of followed them when they had Favre in charge because he was doing really really well and he's kind of always punched above their weight I mean Gladbach like that what, what, what the fuck is a Gladbach you know but they took four they took four points off of uh, Bayern Munich last season Aye, so I don't think I, I I would I would probably go as far to say it's a group of death. It, it is, but one thing one thing I would say about Gladbach is like away from home. Last season they just weren't showing anything. Like mm. if I look back at their kind of uh, last results in the Bundesliga, away from home they beat Darmstadt, who was not great. But then before that, drew Bayern, drew with Hanover, Ingo, uh, lost against Hanover, Ingolstadt, and Schalke all away from home. Yeah. They didn't win again uh, away from home uh, until whatever that kind of find one. Yeah, so fuck's sake, the start of the season basically. Had yeah. Berlin on the thirty uh, first of October was the the time before that they won away from home. So I think we can do them at Celtic Park. I think we can do anyone at Celtic Park. To be honest, I don't yeah. think we're going to do Man City at Celtic Park. <laughs> well, you say that and. Barcelona, you know Barcelona have they've made some exceptional signings. They've been extremely active in the transfer window. Uh, comparative, comparable rather, not comparable with Real Madrid, who have the transfer ban coming in. Real Madrid bought one player and promoted one player. They took back Morata. That's and right. Then promoted uh... Asensio, Asensio, and both both of them are playing for uh, Spain tonight. But uh, I mean, obviously, but again, we can beat anyone on a day. It's just. It's, it's, I think it's a good, good a good group in the sense that we've got a team, a decent team from the top three leagues on the planet. It's just like varied, it's, you know, it's quite exciting in that sense. But at the same time, I'd much rather have Real Madrid sporting Lisbon in Napoli or something like that. I would just like to have had like Bayern and then like the shittest out of the other two pots. I, I've seen, I, there's a lot of talk about would you rather have <coughs> where, Sorry. You, would you rather have a group with the, um, you know, like, like the superstars and have a difficult, you know, really difficult group stage, but like see the people at Celtic Park or just have a group that you've got a better chance of qualifying from. I don't know. I mean, latter every time for I, me, man. I, I would. I I know. I I'm, I absolutely. Sc- I really wanted a Madrid team. Like really, really wanted a Madrid team, and you know, some something new, something fresh, like Napoli or or a fucking I don't know Zenit St Petersburg or something like that. Something <laughs> fresh, although that would be a cunt for the fans to get to. Yeah. That's the, the eighth time I've said cunt, so you might want to bleep that. No, nah, we're going for cunt tonight, man. Right, cunt. <laughs> but I, man, um, so I, I'm, I'm excited about that, and I want to talk about uh, Las Palmas. Okay, go I don't know it. if anyone's following uh, Spanish football, but Las Palmas are kind of the revelation in Spanish football just now. Is that the team Vinny uh, Samuels played for? Who? Vinny Samuels. <laughs> who the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm sure that Vinny Samways played for them. Vinny Samways? Samways. He was like an ugly English footballer. He played for Everton in the past. 
Probably like they're, a, they're from Gran Canaria. Last Palmas, Palmas. Yeah, they've they played 106 of games for them. I mean, that's a lot. Like they, they're based in like Las Palmas, which is like when you, if you go to Gran Canaria with your mates, like the chances are you're staying in Las Palmas. So they play in like the Holiday Islands. They played two one two. It doesn't seem like a lot, but they scored nine goals in two games. One of the games they beat Valencia four two in the Mestalla. Nice man. Kevin Prince Boateng was running right. They made they signed Boateng. Obviously, he's a bit of a, a myth these days. He cuts about and he's played in fucking. <laughs> you know, he played. He played. Uh, Schalke, he was at Schalke. Aye. In Milan, Schalke, Portsmouth, back to Milan. I'm sure he was at an even bigger team. And now he's at Las Palmas. It's a bit of a box office signing for them. Um, but he's, he's playing really well. So they beat Valencia, 4-2 in Valencia. And then they played Granada 5. They beat Granada 5-1. They beat them in Gran Canaria. They absolutely destroyed them. They should have been about 10-1. And then, th- like this time last season, I think they'd only scored one goal. And it took them until December to score nine goals. And they've already got nine just now nice. so it's quite a big deal it's the first time they've been on the top of like La Liga in 38 years thank you very much Sid Lowe um, <laughs> they finished 11th last season so it's like really really big news that they're top and obviously they, 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 there's, a, there's a, a stupid super duper early international break that we were talking about a second ago and so they've been top of the league for over two, like essentially two weeks which is a big big deal and they're really really happy it's quite, quite big news here we don't really have any big names apart from Boateng you've got couple other guys you might have heard of they've got uh, like, David Simon who wrote The Wire aye apparently he's playing <laughs> I actually done, looked at my TV there and McNulty from The Wire <laughs> there you go for some reason but, I, um, but apparently they play I haven't got a chance to see them yet but I've been I've been reading about it they play like Baptist football and like when they defend they defend to attack and there's no like kind of Leicester hoof, City then yeah. aye there's no, there's no like hoof and fucking tackle crunch it's like ping 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 ball in the net kind of thing Um and like th- this is their second season in like 20 years they've been in La Liga so it's like two in a row and like they've been in like the second division or even worse they've been in like like the Segunda B which is like the third division or something okay. like that so like they're doing really really well the next game they've got is uh, Sevilla in Sevilla and Sevilla are doing pretty well just now they've got a new manager called Sam Pioli who took Chile to like the Copa America and stuff like that he's like He's a uh, he's well sought after, like well respected manager in Latin America and like even in Spain. They're quite interesting to follow. And then they've got Malaga, but it just seems like uh, Las Palmas are like the Spanish Leicester as it stands. But there's only two games to go, and they'll probably end up finishing about fifteenth. But the fact that they're up there just now, um, and they've scored nine goals in two games, and they're they're they're, they're, they're Las Palmas. Nobody even knows them. Well, it's dream. a big talking point in Spain. <laughs> totally, a big talking point in Spain just now. So nice, there you go, nice. trips. Nice. So, uh, do we have any? We don't have any other feedback or shit, do we? Any what? Any other feedback or anything, do we? Nah, man. Oh, there was That's a guy so... asking for an episode of Nakamura as well. Hmm. So Potentially, it's a bit obvious. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to get obvious at one point if you want to continue the podcast. I know, I know but I like the idea of doing like, sort of like. I don't know, when, niche things, well, whatever, but I, I mean... When we're going to do the seventh partner on Hen- Henrik? Exactly. <laughs> we, I mean, the Celtic History podcasts have covered quite a lot of that stuff, and again, I recommend people to go back and listen to them, because they're excellent. But I, we're, we're open to suggestions for, you know, Partizan Belgrade's a good suggestion, maybe other ones that are maybe go further back, because we've, you know, we've kind of bobbled around in the, the more recent history. We have went back to, like, the 50s only once, but Suggestions are welcome. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it was actually a, uh, I was listening to the was it the Clyde uh, One podcast? I don't know why. why? I don't know why. Like I was in I was in the Highlands of Scotland and they did like forty podcasts I listened to to, to when I was walking about. Uh, but one of the quiz questions was that there was uh, the, the the who were the different players that played in the nineteen seventy European Cup final from the nineteen sixty seven European Cup final. And I was like, I named them all because we just done the podcast, didn't it? <laughs> oh, aye, nice one. Aye, so. I think one of the one of the podcasts we we're talking about doing was on Neely Morgan. Aye, yeah, so good, uh, some, maybe something along that, something along those lines. But yeah, cool. Yeah, right. So uh, we're going to record again after uh, the game on. We're recording Sunday, I take it, and release. Yeah, in, be- in, in between. Aye, so preview Barca, talk about uh, the zombie game, and. Uh, deal with the next history yes. let's do
death Put on your red shoes and dance the blues Let's dance To a song they're playing on the radio Let's sway While color lights up your face Let's sway Sway through the crowd to an empty space And if you say run I'll run Say hide will hide because my love for you would break my heart in two if you should fall into my arms and tremble like. Like flowers. 